Hi, I'm Scott Morris, and the uh, piece I just played was uh, called Petite Permutations, and it's actually in the newly revised, uh, the second edition of my uh, book, Classical Guitar Complete, Volume 1. I wanted to play this to, uh, well, you know, to, to play something I wrote, because I ha haven't done that for uh, one of these videos yet. But also, I wanted to just kind of talk about what an etude is and what this spe specific etude is for and then kind of take you through and, and, and show you all of the different little uh, uh, things here that will hopefully help you improve your left hand technique. First, what is the point of an etude? An etude is that sort of middle ground between say abstract technical work, say sitting around and you're just working on slurs and a piece of you know complicated music or even simple music what the etude is of course etude the french word for study is really that space between where it's musical you have to play musically it is a piece of music but it focuses on a specific technique or you know maybe a, a few techniques but it is uh, definitely written for that purpose and this particular etude is written for obviously left hand slurs in, in first position. The point of this isn't just the slurs, but it's also playing slurs with fixed fingers. So if we look at the, the opening here. Okay, so got the slur here but I'm also holding a note down in the bass with the third finger so it's not just as you know, not just that okay, dynamics also play an important role in this etude because one of the things I notice with well with my own playing and you know with my students uh, who I work with uh, weekly I notice that often slurs change um, you know speed wise depending on what the dynamic range of the particular passage is. In other words, um, if they're getting louder, they tend to speed up their slurs. Um, if they're getting you know, quieter, they tend to slow down their slurs. Uh, that's something that sometimes works. I mean, musically, speeding up and slowing down can be you know, a, a wonderful gesture, but you don't want it to be something that you can't control. So you need to make sure to stay steady it doesn't matter uh, what the, the dynamic range is. So there are sections in here where you have to slur and it's quiet and you have to slur and it's loud and you've got to keep that, that, that steady tempo going there. Okay, so the, the, the other part of this is I was really thinking as I was you know, working on this, how to work on the different parts of the hand. So you know, how to work on, say, the slurs for, you know, from my perspective, the left side of the hand here, so one and two, and then, you know, three and four. Three and four obviously is the, the more challenging uh, part of the hand, so the right side of the hand is the most underdeveloped for most players out there. So to kind of work on each one separately in different sections and then put it all together. So in the beginning, because you, know, you want to start off with, uh, with, a, with an optimistic attitude, you know, the easiest one hopefully for, for most people is to slur with the first finger. Right in there with four. So while fixing three on five, we're working on the outer fingers. We're working on one and four. Measure three, we introduce the second finger. And that second finger comes in actually with a compound slur, so it's two open two, so you're slurring three notes together. There's a crescendo, right? And then the little you know descending line here. There's a decrescendo down to a minor. So it's the same idea um, as from the, the beginning here. So here you're fixing two, and you're hammering on with one now. tricky one. First one there you have to hammer on open three uh, with the third finger and then a compound slur with the pinky so that's tricky. And that's 
it's all loud there. So, you know, again, you don't want to, you know, rush that. Then little descending line there. You know, this right here, this doesn't seem like, you know, much of anything, this little. There are no slurs there, so oftentimes somebody looking at this might think, oh, well, it's just a little transition. There's, there's nothing related to the etude here because it's a slur etude. Well, not so fast. We're coming from slurs. Into a completely different technique. And one thing I noticed with my own playing, and I see it with my students a lot, is it's difficult to keep a steady pulse, to keep a steady tempo going from two different techniques. So, you know, say going from a scale section to an arpeggio section, and it's all 16th notes. Uh, sometimes they don't match up quite the same because they feel technically very different. Well, it feels very different to do that than that. So, you know, they didn't know it, but I gave this piece to a couple of students last year as an experiment to see what they would do with it. And wouldn't you know it, um, a good number of them did this. Because this is easier. So they didn't match the tempo to uh, the uh, descending slur scale figure before. So those are little little things to look out for here. Then this is measure 18. Comes back. Then we get to the next new part here. This is measure 25. This is pretty tricky. G on the third fret of the sixth string, and then you have to slur this little descending scale that's really kind of based around the you know the G7 the dominant. So you know two one four all working all three works and then so that's a tricky little figure right there. So you're fixing one on the first fret of six. That's you know mostly right side of the hand, right? While well, fixing uh, the uh, the first finger, then open E, so nothing to fix, and then open uh, one open one open two open, so left side of the hand, and then then repeat all that. there just to get to the end here but um, that's the idea so you know to go through and, and and figure out what each measure is really trying to help you with you know to just say it's a slur etude it's too simple that doesn't really tell you anything and and here you know it's, you know I wrote it so I don't have to try to get inside the the mind of the uh, composer who wrote the piece I know exactly what I was trying to do with each measure and you know, I think when you're looking at an etude written by somebody other than yourself, you know, it's not always obvious. So you have to sit there and, and really try to figure out, well, what, what are they trying to get me to, to work on here? And, and, and figure it out because that's, you know, the most important thing to just try to get through and, you know, play it okay. You're not really, you know, getting the point of the piece. I hope you uh, learn the piece. If you do, by all means, uh, email me a video link or perhaps I get to hear you play it sometime in person and I'll see you soon.